Well, I guess we don't have enough technology to knock anything big out of the sky. That's why uh, this is a shock, NASA asteroid shock. Why would uh, why a nuclear option may be used on Earth-bound, inbound, that is, uh, celestial rocks? Because that's the last resort. Well, unfortunately, this is not new. They knew that at one point would be having some kind of an Earth impact. And uh, perhaps there should be an international body having to do with uh, bright scientific minds getting together and using uh, technology that they have at their disposal to uh, move these things away as fast as possible or to strike them out of the, out of the skies out of the, uh, you know, the areas close to us or far from us. Uh, going and sending spaceships, manned spaceships or whatever, and uh, collecting rocks, seeing how our universe begun, I mean, that to me is so uh, unnecessary. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to say it's just uh, pathetic and bizarre. It's just unnecessary. Uh, the thing is, if you see these things and you know they're coming at you, uh, it's best to use, I, get, I don't know what we have as far as direct energy weapons that perhaps, or laser weapons that perhaps could do a better job and a faster job uh, knocking these things out of the sky uh, or making them smaller. I mean, if, even if you had smaller pieces, that would mean that they would be coming at you in, in, uh, uh, from all direct, well, in, in all the areas of the world, as the world turns, it would be they would be hitting as marbles hitting on the floor. Um, this is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. As we know, they had the asteroid impact exercise this past week, from Monday to Friday. I would expect they'd be coming out with their results. Of course, their uh, drill had uh, had a potential impact of only 1%. Uh, if it were more, like 10 or 50%, perhaps, they would all have failed their exercise drill. Now, Na NASA may be forced to use nuclear missiles to deal with such an asteroid, potential asteroid impact. Uh, this is concerning what a documentary concludes. It may not remove the threat completely, however. Apophis is the asteroid we're talking about. Apophis 99942. It's a 370-meter-wide near-Earth orbit space rock, and it continues to pose a, de a destructive threat to Earth. The initial observations from the Space Agency in 2004 revealed the probability of 2.7% that it could strike Earth in 10 years. So if they knew that Apophis had a 2.7% strike potential, why did their drill only have a strike potential of 1%? It should have been at least a 2.7% or a 5% or 10 or 50%. But why 1%? So that everybody could pass the drill? Okay, I'm playing the devil's advocate here. I'm sorry about that. Let's go on with this. The additional observations later ruled this date out, claiming it would pass through a gravitational keyhole, setting up a future impact seven years later, in uh, 2036. So the, um, the series concerning this is the Amazon Prime Space Files, and it revealed how there are a number of ways NASA could deal with such a celestial body. It details that there is one Apophis that does threaten the Earth, but if we are vigilant, we may have time to deal with it. One idea is for a curved reflector. We could focus the rays of the sun on a small spot and drive the asteroid from harm's way. In other words, okay, using the sun's rays, um, solar energy, of course, 
and uh, having this huge reflector and beaming a laser beam at it, trying to somehow, uh, if it was an icy body, I don't know if, if it were a, a very hard rock body, I don't know how they would act, but if it was an icy body, perhaps you could warm it, it would melt, and it would somehow, I don't know, uh, you would try and deflect it that way. Now, another approach could be a little rocket driver attached to the asteroid and moving it to a safer orbit. So the rocket would go and attach itself or even um, go as one of the uh, 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 NASA space asteroid missions that we have. They're going to crash a spacecraft onto the asteroid and deflect it that way hoping that the spacecraft would have enough force to push it away from its, uh, significantly away from its orbit. Now, the rocket driver attached to the asteroid, moving it to a safer orbit, but a series, the series went on to detail another option, and it explained, but if it, time is really short and we could be hit within days, there is the nuclear option. A warhead could blast the asteroid away from Earth. The trouble is, we might have a shower of fragments heading our way, meaning that they would all be radioactive fragments falling everywhere. A better option may be to aim the warhead at the side of the asteroid for a standoff detonation. If the calculations are right, the projectile will be shunted from its collision course. By late 2008, the probability that Apophis would pass through the gravitational keyhole was determined to be very small, ruling out an impact in 2036, but the threat is not completely eliminated, they say. NASA later confirmed February 21, 2013, that there is a 150,000 to 1 chance of a direct impact with Earth in 2068. So it comes around every few years, you see. And they also uh, disclosed that on April 13, in 10 years, 2029, that Apophis will pass Earth within the orbits of geosynchronous communication satellites. That means it will pass Earth as close to us as our satellites are. It will come as close as 19,400 miles above the Earth's surface, making the pass much closer than first predicted. Oh, that's amazing. Well, if it's if it's if the astronauts said that um, there's no worry, it uh, will not pass. It did not pass through the gravitational keyhole to come close to us. How are they now saying that um, it's much closer than what they thought? Nineteen thousand four hundred miles above Earth's surface, making it pass much closer than first predicted. So I'm totally confused now. The pass in late March of 2036 will be no closer than about 15 million miles and will most likely miss Earth by about 34 million miles. So uh, this one is going to be 19,400 uh, 19, um, miles above the Earth's surface. The other one will be okay, right, about 10 times more. That will be out far out, 15 million miles. So it's this one here that we're really worried about, the one that's coming in in 10 years. On average, one asteroid the size of Apophis can be expected to impact Earth about every 80,000 years. And as we know, we have the, the Earth riddled with asteroid impact craters uh, all the way from uh, the big one in Manicougan, Canada, and uh, various ones, beautiful dry ones in uh, Arizona. At least 50 asteroid impact craters. Uh, I recently read an article on that in Australia. This one is the Yucatan that supposedly gave us the dinosaur extinction. This is the huge one. You can even see it from way far up above the Earth in Google Earth. This is the one in Manicougan, Quebec. As you can see, perfectly round, 
like a head-on collision. It's the same one. Perfectly round, like a head-on collision. So, uh, yes, we get them quite often, and the Earth is riddled with them. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.